This is the Uptick Network Stock Day Podcast, sponsored by InvestorsHangout.com. Penny stock news and interviews from the microcap world. Public information on OTC, pink sheets, and microcap stocks from around the world. With your host, Everett Jolly. On today's show, we have a very exciting guest with us. He is Brady Grainer. He is the CEO of BioCorex uh, Inc. They trade on the OTC pink sheets under the ticker symbol BICX. Uh, BioCorex is an addiction treatment company. Well, they offer a unique approach to the treatment of substance abuse addiction. Brady, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, Everett. Hey, give my listeners a little background of yourself, a little background of your company, how you got involved with uh, BioCorex. Yeah, well, um, my background, I, I am a, register, a former registered nurse. I had my bachelor's in nursing in, uh, another lifetime ago, and I worked in ER, ICU, CCU, and all the critical care areas. I treated a lot of addicts in my life, um, have addiction in my family, so have, I have more, more experience than I care to have in the, in the field. Um, I completely left the healthcare uh, profession over 15 years ago and got into uh, entrepreneurial endeavors, ended up at a company called Clear Channel, which is now iHeartMedia and became the um, right. director, of business, director of business develop there, development there. And But I was always the healthcare category captain for the company because of my healthcare background. So um, all of the medical healthcare related advertisers would always come across my desk for me to evaluate and meet with the doctors and those guys because I can talk to talk. So long story short, um, I was I spent 11 years there and at the tail end of that career, I, I was exposed to this little clinic out in Santa Ana, California that was doing this implant for addiction and I'd never heard of it when I was you know in uh, as a as a registered nurse right started doing research and learn more about naltrexone and we you know and, and why I haven't why didn't I hear about this drug um, back in the day when it was already FDA approved back in 84 and long story short there's a compliance issue with the drug people just don't take it uh, even though it works very well so what our company what this company has done well backtrack a little bit I, I got to know the founders of the company, believed in what they were doing, saw how I was changing lives. Uh, they asked me to come and be the CEO of the company uh, three and a half years ago. Um, I jumped at the opportunity to do it, left my career corporate job um, to go to a startup. Uh, but I believed in the product. And over the last several years, we cleaned the company up, we restructured the, the product, had a distribution model, changed the name. Uh, we did a lot. We had a lot of changes that took place over the last three and a half years. Um, so the program that the, the product that the company has is called the BioCorrect Recovery Program, and what that is, it's a we call it a non-addictive medication-assisted treatment program. And medication-assisted treatment, which uh, is MAT, M-A-T, is a buzzword in the industry, um, and that's the combination of medications and therapy to treat addiction, because. That's how addiction is a disease, and it needs to be managed. There's no cure. It's much like diabetes. You treat diabetes with insulin and weight management and diet. Some patients need insulin. Some people do not. So it's, it's, you can look at it. If you want to compare it to something, you can compare it somewhat to diabetes. So medication-assisted treatment is that combination. Now, in medication-assisted treatment, you basically have three drugs, basically, that are used uh, predominantly. Are medications. You have methadone, which a lot of people have heard of, right, and suboxone, right. which is buprenorphine. Those are used to treat opiate addicts, uh, the opiate addiction, not for alcoholism. Uh, but they are, they're also uh, addictive in themselves. Absolutely. So they have a street value. They have a street value to them. Now, trexone is that drug that's the non-addictive medication. There is no street value. You can't get high on it. But also, it's effective against alcoholism and opioid abuse. So that's the drug that we work with, and we built an entire counseling program that was written by addiction experts uh, that, that are, have, ex, have experience with treating patients on these naltrexone implants. So it, there's, there's a different way. That these, these people react differently. When they get the implant, a lot of them feel like they're cured, and that's the wrong attitude. So there's, there's a lot of pr um, uh, counseling that takes place before and after the program. So it's built around this implant, and we also have a tracking program uh, that's about a year long that tracks patients 
uh, over the course of their um, their sobriety so that we can get statistics and also have someone kind of checking up and doing some coaching and, Absol- and uh, sponsor sponsoring so to speak so yeah so all in all the program is there's two major components you have the medication side and you have the psychosocial side and in the psychosocial side you break that up and we have counseling and we have peer support so all in all from start to finish the program is about 13 months long um, it's all done outpatient this can be done with um, people that are functioning addicts that that, are, that still have a job and they can they can enter recovery uh, while not missing their life they recover in their life well let me ask uh, you this pers- how, how big a size of the industry and the opioids crisis I mean is this a huge crisis in America well, I mean, you know, all you need to do is you know turn on the TV or go online, and you can see uh, the news every day of the, the overdoses taking place all over the place. It does not discriminate. Um, it's happening everywhere in places that you know you wouldn't imagine. West Virginia, Ohio, uh, Vermont have major, major uh, crisis problems. Southern California. I mean, it's it's, it's everywhere, and uh, it's a big topic. Alcoholism is still a bigger problem. Uh, opioid abuse is is a growing epidemic, and people. If you think about it, people die of overdoses. Absolutely. You don't hear of a lot of people dying. You don't hear a lot of people dying of alcoholism, even though they die of the long-term effects of alcoholism from other things. But you usually don't see it on the on the uh, death certificate. So even though alcoholism is a bigger problem right now, the epidemic is on the on, on the uh, the heroin and prescription uh, pill market. Overall, the addiction treatment market is a thirty-five billion dollar market. Um, most of that, of twenty somewhat billion of that, is for alcoholism. So you can see there that alcoholism is the bigger problem, but uh, you know the opioid side and the, you know the meth side is is growing. Um, so it is it is a you know the problem right now is you have a lot of these um, um, the heroin is laced with fentanyl, which is more potent. So people are overdosing a lot, a lot more than they used to. Uh, so the drug makers are profiting by cutting it, so they're stretching that right, drug right. out more, and and they're getting you know, they're making more money, but pe- more people are dying as a as a result, plus the crackdown on the prescription pill market is create some issues of its own. I mean, you want to cut down on access, but what happens is it pushes people to the street where they can get street heroin cheaper than they can get, you know, oxycotton. Um, and and you, you know, don't even know what you're getting. And you don't even know what you're getting. You don't. You don't know what you're getting. But the problem is, you, once you're addicted, you don't. I mean, you, you, you don't need care. that. You need you need that fix to feel. Well, you need it to feel normal. That's the that's the problem. Is it's. You know, you have these people, you know, most of them need to take it every day to go on with their normal life. And right. if you can't get it from your, you know, from your traditional sources, then you go to the street. And that's why you're starting to see, you know, soccer moms and, you know, things that you, you know, you, the face of addiction is different. It's not what it, when you think of heroin addiction, it's not what you, it's not the same person you pictured, you know, five, 10 years ago. That's true. My guest today is uh, Brady Grainer. He is the CEO uh, Biocorex uh, Inc. Uh, they trade on the OTC pink sheets under the ticker symbol B I C X. So, where do we go from here? I mean, let me ask you this: On your MAP program, h- how does someone be- get into your program? How do you guys make your money? And take us through that uh, that roadmap, if you will. Yeah, well, we we don't treat patients directly. A lot of people think we do. We're, we're um, we also don't make the naltrexone implant um, that it's made by a compounding pharmacist that makes it for our patients. So we, we actually dis- we're, we distribute our entire program to independent physicians around the country, whether they be detox centers, uh, doctors that are doing Suboxone and buprenorphine and methadone or Vivitrol, which is the injectable form of naltrexone, which we will talk about in a minute. Um, you know, so we sell, we sell that entire program, which gives them the access to the implant, I see, which is a long-lasting implant, which is kind of a sh- the silver, you know, it's the well, not a silver bullet. It's the it's a shiny toy, but not a silver bullet because all it does really does is give that person a window of opportunity of several months to actually get the psychosocial component of the program uh, into place. Because at one point, at some point, the implant will wear off. So it's important that this is not a cure. Uh, it's not a silver bullet. So what happens is in that program, they get the implant, they get the counseling modules that we've created. It's 35 modules and assignments that take people through uh, during uh, over the course of around 16 counseling sessions it typically typically takes. And that usually takes place in under 90 days, under 10 weeks or so. And then at the t- same time, they're entering the peer support program, which lasts 12 months. So 
it, it all, so when they when the uh, provider orders a program from us, they're getting all three of those components, and they're paying us a set fee for those components, and they turn around and they sell it to the patient or the consumer um, for whatever price point they deem uh, appropriate for their market. And they're also offering other services that are not part of our program that they can build into it or build around our program. So the price to the consumer varies. So, so let's get into that. So uh, how, how do you find your clients? Uh, how many programs are you sending out? And what's your margins on that? Can you give us some sort of a, where we had revenues 2014 and 15 and where we're going in 2016? We had a whole shift in our model. See, the company has been about five or six years old, but that's but it's a long history. I mean, we don't have enough time to talk about that on the call today, but it started out at one center that was managing a clinic. Uh, the model has completely changed as we separated to become a distribution company, and now we're actually distributing to independent physicians, right. um, which I talked about earlier. But that is – we just launched the BioCorrect Recovery Program, the new counseling program. This whole new model was launched a year ago. So even though the company has been around for a few years, we view it as – you know, we're one year old at this point with our new program and, and distribution network. So we actually, uh, I think last year's revenue was nearly a million. So we're right now we're in the process of adding partner centers around the country. I see. Uh, that's what it added. So what we do is we add them on, we train them, they get educa- all the education, uh, best practices. We're truly partners with them because we're, we're collaborating to, uh, with this you know, with this to help treat this patient because we kind of we handle a lot of the psychosocial component for a lot of our partners. So it's a true collaboration. So um, we're adding these people as we speak, and there's a process. They take sometimes they take a few weeks or months to get trained and up and running. They have to go out and do marketing and build up their uh, the build their pipeline. But absolutely, you got to also realize that this is a surgical procedure. So. The, it's, not for, it's not going to be for everybody. Most people that go for treatment, they're going to go the least path of resistance first. You don't wake up one day and say, I'm an addict, let me get a surgery. You try other things first. So we're, we're not in the front line of defense um, because there's other less invasive things that people will tend to try first, like the Vivitrol injectable naltrexone that's on the market. A lot of patients that end up getting implants have tried Vivitrol, they like the way it makes them feel, but they're tired of going in and getting an injectable injection in their in their rear end every month because it it's a rather large shot and it can be painful. So there's a, but that's where a lot of the people first get their taste of naltrexone is from Vivitrol because they're starting to get very popular out there because they're they're a, they're a better alternative in my opinion to you know trying to you know, putting people directly onto methadone or buprenorphine immediately. Um, I think the ultimate goal should be trying to get them on something like a naltrexone. You know your comp- your your company recently announced an R and D initiative on the uh, the naltrexone injectable de- development project. Uh, how's that going? Can you elaborate a little bit on that? Yeah, well that's that's we have a great program right now with the implant and it really really works. Uh, but there are barriers, like I said earlier, is the is the surgery right. insurance uh, insurance companies aren't you know opening up their checkbook to pay for this automatically. You know, there's a lot of work there on the clinic in. That's, it's difficult. It's primarily a cash paid business, um, and that's unfortunate. But uh, because it really works so well, and it can save the insurer so much money, but that's a diff- that's a different battle. Um, on the inject, that's why we're in- excited about the injectable. In- as I said, injectables are the least least path of resistance. Um, we have acquired some technology that has an underlying patent with uh, a dozen patent pendings on an injectable naltrexone that can be delivered um well we we we, we presume it could be delivered because we're we're uh, studying it right now in the lab that we can deliver the same amount of uh, coverage of naltrexone for 30 days if not even longer up to six weeks that um the other product on the market delivers we should be able to deliver that um, in a much much smaller volume which means that we can potentially inject it subcutaneously or intramuscularly in a in, in the arm instead of a deep injection in the buttocks, which right. tends to be painful and huge volume. So we're excited about that product because if it does um, as advertised, and we we're confident it will, uh, but we still have some more uh, studies in the lab to conduct, we feel that um, it will be a very good alternative 
to whatever's on the market now, and we should be able to capture a lot of that market share of the other product, and um, or even you know, or even grow that, you know, because if we can deliver this in an in- injectable with a small needle, then w- it should open it up to more providers offering it and more patients willing to get it. We just uh, had a press release that came out um, recently that um, discussed the the, pro- uh, the progress we made in the lab to date, and as of um, as of now, it seems that we are just under or just at two milliliters of volume in the injectable, and it seems like the lab uh, stimulation studies uh, point to us being able to deliver it for up to six weeks at two nanograms per milliliter, which is the therapeutic level uh, for naltrexone to uh, to block cravings. So it looks like right now in the lab, in the in vitro studies that the product um, should, uh, once we get into animal studies or human studies, should be able to deliver that desired um, therapeutic level for at least a month and in a injectable volume much, much smaller than the current products on the market, which, which would be uh, very nice if we were able to, to, uh, to validate that pretty soon. Brady Greener has been our guest today. I appreciate him coming on the show. He's a very busy guy. Well, he's the CEO of uh, BioCorex. Uh, trading on the OTC pink sheets under the ticker symbol BICX. Their market cap is just around $7 million, and their stock price is around $0.04. Cents. To me, it seems to be very undervalued at this time. I want to thank you for coming on the show, Brady. I wish you nothing but the best, and we'll get to check back with you in a couple of months to see how things are going. Thanks a lot, Everett. I appreciate the time. 